Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hope you all still have your attention, uh, attention ready. Uh, we've still got a couple good companies up here to introduce. Um, I obviously gave my macro outlook yesterday. I don't like to repeat myself, so I will not do another overview talk, but instead I use my second talk at MIF to go through the companies that I own here and why I own them. And the reason that I do that is because a lot of information gets thrown at you folks over these two days. A lot of companies obviously tell you why, uh, why they're great. And so I go through the ones that I own, the idea being to summarize in sort of 60 seconds my investment thesis for that company. And so if it's one that you're interested in, maybe that will help crystallize it. If it's one that didn't catch your attention, maybe it will or will not impact. But I think you should be able to sum up an investment thesis in about 60 seconds if you really believe in a story. So that's the challenge that I pose for myself. And so I'm just going to run through the list. When I do so, they're just in alphabetical order. It isn't in order of preference or anything like that. I start with just this comment. It's very easy at conferences like this to get excited. And that's a good thing. That's why we're here, right? At the beginning of a bull market, let's get excited. But um, it's easy to get excited in this arena about exploration companies. And that's great, except that we're still in the early stages of a gold bull market. And that means that there's a lot more opportunity out there than only offered by exploration companies. So I just counsel taking a step back on a regular basis and looking at your portfolio and making sure that you have at least given thought to all the different kinds of opportunities that are out there. And so that starts with mid, mid to large producers. As much as they seem boring, they're low risk, they're reliable, they do well in a bull market. So that can be a good um, fundamental component to a portfolio. And then moving on through the risk, port, the risk trajectory to sort of the new and single asset producers, the projects that are growing in foundational value but are also um, offering up exploration excitement good ex exploration companies, royalty companies, make sure that you have a bit of a range in there. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, where your portfolio should focus within that range, to me, really depends on two things. One is your risk tolerance, and the other is how much time you want to spend paying attention to your portfolio. The higher the risk, the, h the more time you need to spend paying attention. Ex exploration stocks bump up and fall back down based on, you know, short-term events. And so if you don't want to be on top of the news every day, that's totally valid. But don't then fill your, your portfolio with exploration stocks that actually demand that of you. So these are just sort of uh, comments before I start going through the companies that I own that are here at MIF. <clears throat> I don't think I need to spend a lot of time explaining the Great Bear story. Great Bear is familiar to most people here. Uh, the game changer that happened this week was one of scale, right? Dixie had two uh, discoveries, the limb zone and the hinge zone. They're both fantastic, high grade, classic Red Lake discoveries of narrow veins, fantastic grades. What they announced this week really opened up an entirely different part of the project, this long LP fault, to having both high-grade gold and disseminated mineralization. There's still a huge amount that we do not know about this system, how big it is, how, much, how rich the disseminated mineraliz mineralization is, how far along this um, structure the gold is spread. But there, the potential for scale multiplied with the news that happened this week. Risk is still very real, but the potential multiplied. So it's a super exciting story. It's obviously the one that's grabbing the most attention in the exploration space. And um, they have lots of cash and very interestingly, a very tight share structure, which helps amplify responses to news. High Gold is one that you're going to hear from here shortly. This is a company that was spun out from Constantine and will be coming to trade very soon. Tight share structure, just raised a whole bunch of money um, with some very good uh, shareholder groups, um, some of whom are known for very intense due diligence. The reason those groups came in is largely because of a project called Johnson Tract, which is a high-grade gold copper uh, discovery. I think I'm going to steal Darwin's line here, where he's going to say it's a, it's a well-developed discovery um, waiting to happen. So the discovery's been made. The reason that I put this image up here is look at some of those widths and grades. So 71 meters of 21 grams gold. That's the kind of intercept that this thing produced back in the 80s when it was being explored. It then got 
um, got put away in a native corporation and nobody's looked at it for 25 years. So the market doesn't remember that it exists, um, but the team is about to go up there. They will be listed shortly, then they will go up there. They will initially start drilling into the known zone to confirm that it's there, and then there's lots of opportunity to expand it. This is a really interesting new company like I say, tight share structure, good shareholder groups, a really interesting forgotten high-grade asset that has the potential to produce the kind of intercepts that the market really responds to. So um, yeah, definitely one to watch. They also have a cluster of projects in Ontario that give them, uh, that are also pretty interesting high-grade gold and give them the opportunity to work year-round. So that's high gold. You will hear more about that shortly. Integra, uh, as Chris mentioned multiple times when he was up here yesterday, the PEA will be out at the beginning, early this week, probably Monday after the close. I think that matters because it will give market, the market the ability to define value at the Delamar project. I think Integra has not been given as much value as it perhaps might have been for Delamar because they needed to modernize and grow the resource and then demonstrate that it was economics. Now, the market will be able to do that. They're going to see how much can be, what the strip ratio is, how much is going to be lil, milled versus leached, what the scale of the project is going to be, what the costs look like. Answering those questions, first of all, creates the ability to calculate a value. Sec and that enables a whole bunch of other investors to come into stories. There's lots of investors, large funds, that won't come into stories until there's a development asset with defined parameters and or a company is worth more than $100 million. Integra just actually checked both of those boxes. So as we move into a market where generalists are coming in, Integra just happened to step at that moment into the right spot for those generalists to be able to invest money in this asset. So I think that's the sort of of the moment reason to invest in Integra. Core, who I always want to call Core, I don't know why, but uh, Scott reminded me that it's just called Core yesterday. Uh, core Mining is um, a project, er, is a group that's still fairly new and is just getting started on um, putting effort into marketing. So if you haven't heard about the, the company before, that's, that's not your fault, it's still new and they haven't been out there telling the story a lot. Scott's just hitting the road now to spend the next I don't know how long doing exactly that. Uh, his family's going to miss him. Um, but the story here is the Imperial Project, which is a large all-oxide gold resource in California. There's M&A potential there because Equinox's Mesquite Mine is very close by, and the ore at Imperial would be a great fit for Mesquite. They're going to be permitting that operation. Macquarie just came in and gave them $4 million to do exactly that. So there's fundamental value there, for sure, but CORE is not a one-trick pony. They have three other projects that are also really interesting, that have the potential to generate the kind of exploration news that attracts attention. Um, so I think given the fundamental value at Imperial and the potential for interest, I think that's low valuation and the marketing, marketing matters. People can't buy a story if they don't hear about it. So uh, I think that CORE is also at an interesting juncture as we go forward into this rising market. Libero uh, was put together a few years ago by some, you know, mining entrepreneurs. The idea was to acquire large copper projects that had no fatal flaws, um, and they did that. They, they got them a COA project in Colombia, which is an interesting asset. It's a big resource. It's wide open, especially at depth where the grade gets better. There's a nice soil anomaly a few kilometers away that is actually stronger in terms of a soil anomaly than the deposit that's already there. They're going to be drilling there that winter, so that's Makoa. They also have one in Colorado. Then they picked up the Big Red Project, which is a classic story in the mining and the exploration space where this project had seen work for 40 years, 35 different people, divided ownership. Nobody had ever pulled all the data together and looked at it. So that's what they did. They pulled all the data together. They digitized it. They overlaid all the results. And they're like, oh my gosh, there is a whopping strong soil anomaly here for gold that nobody's ever done anything with. So they went up and sampled it, and they pulled out some amazing numbers. There's five sample trenches that across 250 meters, the trenches averaged over two grams gold in their grab samples along trenches. That's a really outstanding number. So lots yet to be figured out here. They're just going up now to do infill sampling. Then they're hopefully going to drill as long as they can get permits um, this winter. So lots to get to be known, but some really standout initial results from a project that got lost 
in the assessment report filing cabinet for many years. The map there shows the Libero soil anomaly in the overlaid picture against GT Gold soil anomaly with the same contours. We all know what happened when GT Gold dr drilled into their soil anomaly and discovered some really high grade interesting things that the market fell in love with. That's the potential there, big ifs, but a really interesting asset. North Star Gold is another one that is not yet trading yet, but will very soon IPO. Um, based on their IPO price, it'll be an $11 million valuation. This is a company that's been operating privately for a decade. They use that decade to accumulate a really interesting portfolio of assets. With the market rising, it's now time to take those assets public. The one that stands out is called the Miller Project. It is very close to Kirkland Lakes South Macassa, uh, which has been a phenomenal mine. It's the, you know one of the mines that made Kirkland Lake into the story that it is. There's been a fair bit of work at Miller. That work all was vertical holes that showed flat-lying veins in one particular rock type. <clears throat> vertical holes can't hit structures that are also almost vertical. So there's, with trenching, they've, they're fairly certain there's a bunch of very steep structures that have not been intersected. That's a good possibility for increasing the high-grade potential at the project. Then they took a step back and other rock types on the project hold the potent, or have, have been shown with sampling to also hold gold. So there's a lot of exploration possibility here, potentially for a bulk tonnage type deposit that is cut with nice high grade. So that's the idea, and that is what exists very close by at South Macassa. Some of the geologic team that discovered South Macassa is with this group, it's a strong group. The geology looks exactly like this successful mine that's close by, and obviously I threw those drill intercepts up there to give you an idea of the range between the high grade and the disseminated. Really interesting um, asset that the market is just going to start learning about as IPO starts to trade here shortly. Prime mining, Andy is also up here on stage, so you will hear the prime mining story in a moment. This is a quick to production story for a simple heap leach project in Mexico. The asset has been well studied in terms of drilling and metallurgy and engineering. Uh, it's actually very strong grades for a heap leach. The image that I show here is the resource model, and the dark blue is the lowest grades, so that's 0 0.5, 0 0.1 to 0.5, but anything that's light blue and higher is 0.5 grams per ton or better, and green is 1 to 2 grams per ton. This asset for an oxide is like rich, so that really helps. So it's simple, they're going to put it into production quickly, um, and, and that, that's the story. And the market early in a gold, the investors early in a gold bull market really often gravitate towards these quick to production stories because their costs can be very low, like 10, 20 million dollars to get this thing into production. The returns can work really well, um, and it's not complicated like explore, exploration, it's Mine the gold that's here and make money. So, uh, new company, tight structure, enough money to get uh, to get where they're going in the next little while. Uh, so, yeah, a really interesting story in prime mining. Tinka is the zinc story um, that has this large advanced zinc project in a strong jurisdiction for zinc in particular, which is Peru. This is a real project. I think is the is the thing is the take home message. It's a big mine. It would be a big mine, it's only a PEA, uh, has a good return, 20, more than a 20 year mine life. The idea now, optimize the plan and grow the asset. And the chart here shows how successful Tinka has been at growing the resource at Iowilka over the last few years. It's been phenomenally successful at growing the resource and that's because they have each year really refined their understanding of the roles of structure in finding high grade at the project, and so they've been able to add high-grade tons, that's what they're focused on right now. They just, pr they just announced you know, an intercept of 36% uh, 36 zinc. Like, this is what their understanding is allowing them to do. Zinc market will have its day, it's not having it right now, but it will have its day, and when it does, there's hardly any assets out there um, that, that match up to this kind of stage and scale. And last but not least, we have Western Copper and Gold. This is a massive deposit. This is 18 million ounces of gold and nine or nine and a half billion pounds of copper. Okay, so when we're talking scale, there's not a lot of ass assets out there, especially controlled by junior companies that have that kind of scale. So when we talk about a new market and investors coming in and wanting 
um, exposure to a rising gold market, one thing that they go for is simply, like I said, projects that are advanced and have ounces. Well, doesn't get more than doesn't get much more than that than what you get with the casino project. On top of the fact that it is just fundamentally interesting to investors who want to find value. There's also a lot of news flow coming. They're drilling. That's going to upgrade ounces from inferred to indicated, which will help with the economics. They're going to update the resource. They're going to update the feasibility. They're a, a long way through permitting this asset. It's in a really great jurisdiction, which is the Yukon. And given its stage, it has just over 100 million shares out, which is a tight structure for an asset that's this advanced. So if you like M&A, if you like optionality, uh, this is a really standout project for uh, investors, and there's a lot of investors who like exactly those characteristics. Those are my stocks. I have three whole extra minutes, so I don't think I did 60 seconds per stock, but I didn't do much worse than that, so I tried. So from that, we will just move straight ahead, and I would like to...